Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons here with another machine tutorial. So this video is just going to be an intro on using effects in machine. So let's get right into it. The thing you need to understand about using effects in machine is you can put an insert effect on the master, you can put effects on the group, and you can put effects on an individual sound within a group. So the way to do it is to go to the group that you want to put an effect on. So I'm going to go to this one here, which is the piano. And so right now I am on the sound level because I'm playing an instrument, which we want to be on the sound level for that one. And you can see my instrument and then right next to it, you can see this little plus button. And that's where you're going to start adding effects. So what we do is we press the 40 encoder to the right. So we actually push it to the right and then we get to the plus button. And once we get to the plus button, we can now click that 4D encoder to go over and choose some of the internal effects that come with machine. I'm going to stick with the internal ones right now, but you could go and load any effect that you have installed on your computer. So we'll stick with the internal ones for this tutorial. And there are a lot of great effects in here. So we'll start at the top here and we can see we've got things like compressors and gates. We've got a limiter. We've got a maximizer and next we've got an EQ filter and a whole bunch of other effects but you can see the basic ones in here and let's start with something simple like a delay so I'm going to go to beat delay and then I'm going to click load and that's it so we've now put a delay effect as an insert onto this hybrid keys virtual instrument so now I can play my sounds and I can hear that delay so I can set that to 2 16th note. So if I play the note, that's an eighth note. And if I want a quarter note, I can go right here. And if I want even longer, let's go to 8 16ths. So now we're on to a half note. So there we go, we've got a half note. It's a different way of showing the delay time. I'm used to seeing things like half note and quarter note, etc. But this is the way they do it in machine. And one of my favorite delay settings is to set it to a dotted eighth note or a dotted sixteenth note. And in this case, we're going to set it to three sixteenths, which for the musicians out there is technically like a dotted eighth note. It's kind of an eighth note plus a half of an eighth note. And this delay setting is really common, really popular. Let's see, if I just make an empty scene, you can hear what this will sound like. I'm just going to turn the click on and then press play. And if I set the feedback a little bit longer, we're going to hear this even more. Okay, so let's press play and then you'll see what I mean. Da, 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 da. That's dotted eighth note right there. There's other things that would be worth checking out in this delay setting, but maybe we'll do a separate video that just goes into some of the details of the effects. But that's how we put the delay on. Set your, your delay time, try some of the different settings out, and then play with your feedback and your mix. Those are your, the most basic things to set on your delay effect. If I want to add a reverb as an insert now, let's say I want to add another effect, I can navigate with the 4D encoder right over to this next plus button and then click the 4D encoder. Now I can go over and choose something like reverb. So let's go to a reverb. Let's go to this meta verb. It's kind of an interesting reverb. Let's have a listen to that. Let's change the room size to make it bigger. And then let's go navigate to the right and add one more thing to this piano. Let's try just for fun, let's try this lo-fi one. Okay, so now I've got a lo-fi effect on my piano as well as a delay and a reverb. And that's just on this one sound, on this one instrument. What if I want to get rid of some of these effects? So the way to do that is to hold the shift button and you'll see that remove pops up. So I can navigate with the 4D encoder, find the one that I want to remove. Let's say I do want to remove this one. I just hold shift and remove and that immediately gets rid of that effect. I can undo that, of course, if I want to, but maybe I do want to remove that one. 
And then the other cool thing you can do is hold shift and click the bypass button. And what that does is it bypasses this effect. So you can try it, bypass it and try without it. And let's go bypass the delay for a second. And you'll see it gets kind of grayed out. When you load up groups or sounds from some of your expansion packs, you'll notice that some of them have effects on them already. If you don't want the effects, you can just go in and turn it off right here. But let's go to our drum kit for a second and have a look at each sound in the drum kit. So first I've got a kick drum right here and it's got a compressor on it. My snare has an EQ, a meta verb, and a flanger on it. So let's try taking some of these off. Let's try bypassing this flanger. Let's go over to this one and we'll try bypassing the meta verb. So you can hear how dead that sounds. This meta verb is adding just a little bit of room sound to this snare, which sounds a little too dry without it. So I really like that meta verb on there. And then let's go to the EQ and try bypassing that. It's a little bit brighter. We can see that we're, we've got a bit of a boost in the high frequencies right here. And then uh, nothing happened in the low and then something happened in the low, low mid frequencies. Okay, this little hi-hat sound has something called a frequency shifter on it. Let's see what that sounds like. Let's leave that one on there and maybe we'll add uh, another meta verb right there. So I click plus and I go over to meta verb and I hit load. And then now I can turn the mix down and maybe make the room size smaller. And then let's go navigate over and try bypassing the frequency shifter again. Kind of like that. Let's go with that. And go over to our, our hi-hat. That one's fine. Right now I've been adding effects to individual sounds inside group B. Now the next thing to know is that you can go and put effects on the entire group. So I can click the group button up top. And if you're ever missing that for some reason, if you're in a different mode and you can't see those controls, the master group and sound, just click that plugin instance button. That one's always going to get you back to where you want to go. So I click the plugin instance button. I can see group right here. Now I was on sound before, but now I'm on group and I can see that we've already got an EQ and a maximizer. And I can go in and add some other stuff. So let's hear it without the maximizer, shift bypass. Let's, we're just gonna solo the drums here and have a listen to what the effects are doing on this group. So I'm gonna bypass them as we go along here. That's with the maximizer on. Go to the EQ. That's kind of cool. Let's put a little bit of a boost on the low frequencies on this EQ effect. Okay, so what I was doing there was I was boosting 76 hertz, which is getting really low in the frequency range, by 5.2 decibels. I could go up and I could take the high frequencies down. Let's see what that sounds like. Now we've muffled the whole drum kit. Let's boost it. And we're boosting at 5,000 hertz, or just over 5,000 hertz by, um, by a number of decibels. So you hear how much that kind of mutes the sound when I bring the high frequencies down and brings it up when I go the other way. But that just shows you how you could put an effect on an entire group. I've got my, my bass sound. And we'll just leave that one the way it is. I go on, I've got my hybrid keys, which we already put effects on. This, this blue vinyl here could use some reverb as well. And I'm just gonna show you how to put reverb on everything individually. But in this case, what we would might want to do is have a send effect available to every group in our project. And what that means is you only have to make one reverb and everybody gets to send a portion of their track to that reverb. I'll make a separate video on that so you can check that out when it comes up. But for now, what you could do is you could just put a reverb on each individual group. So let's try that. Let's put a, a reverb on this one. I'm gonna click plus and I'm gonna go over to my reverb and I'm gonna hit load. 
And then now we can hear that one. And here we can change the room to a hall or a plate, which is an artificial reverb. I like this hall setting a lot. And we can adjust the reverb time to make it a little bit longer. And let's just leave it there. We can change the room size and then the mix right here. So if I want less reverb. And then on my last group, I've got this sampler thing, this pad sampler thing. Maybe what I'll do for this one is just put a little bit of reverb on the entire group. So I'll go to group and I click the plus button and I go over, let's go back over to metaverb for a second, hit the load button. And then now I'm going to take my room size up and my mix down. And that sounds great right there. So now I've got effects on all of my groups. I'm happy with the way those sound. And let's hear what it sounds like in the song. I'm gonna go from the beginning. So for the last thing I mentioned about using insert effects here, is to understand that you can do some mastering effects to your project if you click the master button. So hit the plugin button, go over to master, click the master button, and there we can add mastering effects to the whole project. So at this point, you might want to click on it and go over to something like the maximizer. So if I click the maximizer, maybe some compression first. If you were to use a compressor first, you could go in and sort of chop down the the transients that are really sticking out. And then you go and use something like a maximizer to add a brick wall limiter to the entire project. So that's getting into a whole other realm of mastering, but it's important to understand that you can actually do this from machine. We can click the plus button. I've got a compressor on that on there now, and we can go through and change the compression settings. And then we can click plus and go to the maximizer, load that one. And that's going to make everything just a lot louder. So that's adding effects to the entire project. I hope that tutorial helped you get started to put some effects on your sounds and your groups and have some fun with it because it's it's where things really start to come alive. I had so much fun working with the effects when I was making my B-flat song. So go check out the B-flat song. Every single sound that I recorded and put in that project had some kind of effects on it. And you just got to get in there and dig in and try some of these effects out and start playing around with it. And if you find some effect that you're a little bit confused by, check the manual. It's got detailed settings on each one of these controls for each one of these effects. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.